What's going on guys? So uh, it is a beautiful day as you can see. I figured I'd give you a different background. Going to the porch, just too much shade. I want to get out in the sun and I want to do a story time video. So today's story time video is about my current favorite sport and the one sport that most people have played, bowling, right? <laughs> bowling is the one sport where you can have a lot of fun and still do horribly. Um, not a lot of people go out and jump into football games or even shoot hoops, but pretty much everyone's bowled. There's no age limit for bowling. You could be two all the way up to 100, right? And there's actually people who still currently bowl that are over 100 years old. So uh, yeah, why, why bowling? Well, that's why I'm telling a story. <laughs> so first off, let me tell you the history of myself and bowling. Uh, when I was a kid, my, uh, my dad would take me bowling occasionally. Uh, I had tons and tons of different hobbies as a kid, just like I do now. The only difference was I was kind of a baby and I quit things when I wasn't good at them, you know? So uh, as an adult, if I'm not good at something, I practice more, you know, and still enjoy it, having fun, even if I'm not good. But you know, being a kid, sometimes you're stubborn and stuff. Like, you know, my, uh, my parents have always supported me in all of my hobbies and all my interests. Like at one point I wanted to play guitar. I wanted to learn how to play guitar. So my parents got me some guitar lessons and you know, about two weeks in, I thought, ah, this is boring. Cause I was, you know, being taught the basics. And so I quit, <laughs> and I, I played pretty much every sport under the sun, and I've quit them all. Uh, as an adult, like I said, I try to be a better person, just enjoy the experience. I obviously, realize I'm not gonna be good at everything, uh, but you know, I was kind of a stubborn kid. So anyway, bowling was one of those things. At some point, I really wanted my own bowling ball. My dad got me a custom bowling ball. Did it for, you know, whatever it was, six months, a year, and just kind of faded out, wasn't getting very good, so I quit. Now. Years later, I found my bowling ball, but it was broken. It was improperly stored in the cold, and it was a huge crack down the middle, so there's no salvaging it. So unfortunately, I don't have my original ball to show you guys. But um, <laughs> I, I still enjoyed bowling every now and again, and I would say in the last probably 20 years, I've, I've only bowled maybe a dozen times, you know? Um, I just haven't gone much. I, I basically bowled whenever there was some kind of party. You know, when I was dating my uh, my now wife, Christina, uh, I went to her, my now sister-in-law's party. And that was a bowling party. I had a, a ton of fun. I did pretty good. I actually beat everyone there. It was like 20 people. You know, and I, I felt cool and everything. And it was, it was a good time. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get back into bowling. It didn't happen. So a couple years later now, this is where we sit. And there's three bowling balls in front of me on the ground, which I'll talk about in just a minute here. So, yeah, fast forward to about maybe a week and a half ago or so. It was my uh, niece Kaylin's birthday party, and she wanted to uh, have a bowling party. I thought that was pretty cool. Me and Christina were very excited to go bowling. We ended up getting there about a half an hour or 40 minutes early before the rest of the family got there. And so to kill time, we ended up looking at uh, a catalog with different bowling balls in it. So I was kind of half joking to her. I'm like, you know, we should get really into bowling and get really good and stuff. We got to buy our own balls. Because I was explaining that, you know, when you get a custom ball drilled and it fits your hand, it's just, it's just a lot more fun. You know, when you go to a bowling alley and you grab one of the house balls off the rack, maybe you get one that kind of fits the weight, you know, where it's comfortable. Cause usually that's what it comes down to is, are my fingers going to fit? And can I hold the ball? Is it going to be too heavy? So, you know, I was telling her that using a house ball is nothing like using a custom ball. So I was kind of joking about it, but, um, we ended up looking and we, we saw a couple different balls that we would have maybe got if we got into it. And then my, uh, my parents arrived and everyone else showed up and we ended up just, you know, continuing bowling. Had an awesome time. We both did really, really well, which sparked the interest even more. And uh, later that day, we made a decision to really learn how to bowl, to learn properly. So we ended up um, going back and getting fitted for custom balls. So that, you know, of course, measure your fingers and the distance and everything else to make sure it's going to fit properly. And I ended up doing a uh, fingertip grip, which is a little different. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, she did a traditional, like, full finger grip. And, you know, I learned some things. Talking to the guy that worked there at the pro shop. It's very fascinating. Learning all, all about bowling, you know. I, I mean, I kind of knew about bowling, but in the last week and a half or so, I mean, we've been learning as much as possible and how to properly score when you're bowling. It's not as easy as just counting the pins you knock down. There are some different rules when you get spares and strikes and stuff. Um, learning all about different grips, different oil patterns on the lane. I mean, just, it really is surprising. Like any other sport, 
It's not as easy or simple as you think. There's a lot of science in there, a uh, lot to know, really. So, uh, yeah, after that, we, we went bowling pretty much every other day, <laughs> except for yesterday. Um, you guys saw the video of the old bowling alleys because Christina was on the computer and she was looking up, you know, different bowling alleys that we could possibly go to. And she saw that there was, I think there was only two left in the country that were like that, where, you know, you set the pins up manually yourself. Uh, when we got there, the guy at the bar said that he thinks there's maybe like five in the country, but two that we know of that are functional. And when she told me the town, I'm like, that's not very far from us at all. We can, we can go check it out. And she was very excited. I was very excited. And we did. We had a blast. We had a lot of fun. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure yet, but there might even be smoking. I didn't even think of it there because I was so excited about the bowling part. But I always wanted to smoke a cigar while I'm bowling. And obviously, with, with current laws, you can't smoke at any bowling alley. In fact, the bowling alley I went to last, there was a no vaping sign, too. Uh, so that'll probably never happen. That might be the only chance I ever get to smoke a cigar and bowl, unless I went to someone's mansion and they had their own bowling alley down there and allowed smoking in their house. Um, yeah, I got to look into that and see if that place you can, you can smoke. Because there were some cigarette butts in there, but I don't know if those were just some kids or, or guys in the bar that didn't know. Anyway, doesn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah, we're really, really into bowling. So we ended up buying bowling balls. So I'll show you what I got. I ended up getting a Rhino. This is a uh, 15 pounds. This is their Black Pearl. It is a uh, reactive urethane, okay? I did do a fingertip grip, and I got some uh, grip inserts here, or some rubber inserts. So basically, you know when you go to the bowling alley and you're looking for a ball that fits your fingers and you find that like one ball that's like huge and everyone says the same thing, right? Who has hands that big? Well, actually, there's two different ways to drill a ball. One is for your fingers to be completely inside the ball, which we're all used to. And the other one is to have a fingertip grip. So basically just the, the tip of your fingers to the first knuckle is what goes in there, okay? And this is what professional bowlers use, a fingertip grip. And it allows um, you know, them to hook the ball a little bit better. So yeah, and I, of course I got this uh, engraved. I thought my initials were kind of lame because other people have my initials. But even though all you guys watching are cutlery levers, there's only one real cutlery lever, right? So that's what I end up engraving the ball with. Pretty cool. This one has a light bulb style weight on the inside. So it will hook if thrown properly, but it's not like an extreme hook or anything. It's pretty subtle. Um, Christina got a ball as well. She also got a rhino. But hers, I can barely fit my fingers in. I can't fit my fingers in. This one is obviously a different coloration. It's a marbled uh, green and gray. Pretty cool. Uh, looks beautiful in the sun. Mine actually looks a little bit dark purple in the sun. When I'm bowling with it, it's jet black. But anyway, um, and she got a 13 pound, which is, believe it or not, very appropriate for a woman. All these years bowling, I always thought that, like when I go to the bowling alley, I grab like a 12 or 13 pound ball. I think, oh, this feels good. But no, an adult man uh, should probably throw a 15 or 16 pound ball. And believe it or not, once you start getting used to throwing it, or you know, rolling it, um, it really doesn't seem that heavy, you know. Because when you're picking up balls, you're like, oh yeah, the 10 pound feels great because you can, you know, wave it around and stuff. But there's no mass there, you know. If you if you are an adult male, you should be able to throw a 15 or 16 pound ball. It's not about speed. You don't have to throw it hard. It does a lot of the work itself. But yeah, that was something I learned too. Uh, as far as women, you know, adult women, like if you end up joining a league or something, I think 12 is like the minimum. You know, most women throw like a 13 or 14 or, or more. But what's really, really interesting is that uh, once we got the balls, I told Christina that eventually we'll have to get shoes. But I didn't want to go out and spend a bunch of money on shoes. The balls themselves weren't actually all that expensive. You can buy these online, you know, uh, before they're drilled. I think they're about 80 bucks or so. But most places will charge $40 and up to actually drill the holes for you. All right, so it ends up being around $120. The guy at the pro shop did these for one sixteen each, uh, with the free drilling. Free drilling, you just include the price into it. But I was happy with that. But I didn't want to spend, you know, another like sixty bucks on shoes. So I told her, I said, you know, we'll hold off for now, and eventually we'll just buy some used shoes. So I told her, I said, let's go to the Salvation Army, because on occasion I've seen, you know, like bowling ball bags and like random bowling stuff there. So she's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And maybe we'll find like comfortable clothes too. Cause I didn't really want to bowl in like denim jeans or anything. I want to get like a nice pair of slacks or something, a bowling shirt. Uh, so we ended up going to Salvation Army. You're not gonna believe this. 
when we walked in, I told her, I said, you know, I've seen uh, bowling balls occasionally. And she was kind of excited, like, oh, yeah, if we see a cheap bowling ball, we'll get it. And, you know, maybe we'll have it drilled again, you know, for our hands. So we have a couple different options and stuff. So we walk in there. We go, like, to the back where all the knick-knack shelves are and they have the sports stuff. And we see a bowling bag, right? So here's the bag. Hang on a sec. Look at this bag here. Hold on, i got to zipper up this pocket. So i got a surprise to show you. So we get this bowling bag, all right? Thing looks brand new. Like, oh, that's really cool. Price tag on the top was $5.99. So I'm like, wow, brand new bag. This is awesome. It's perfect for the ball. <laughs> I go to pick it up. It's heavy. I'm like, oh man, there's a bowling ball in here, right? So I unzip it and look what bowling ball is inside. Literally the exact same ball I just ordered. Now at this point we didn't get our balls back. We just did all of our, our you know, fitments and, and measurements and stuff. And uh, it was in the mail, it was ordered. So I'm like, I'm like, no way. That's, that's the exact same ball, right? So I stick my fingers in it. Now this does not have, not have a fingertip grip. This has a traditional full finger grip. But I put my fingers in there and it fits perfectly. Like literally fits perfectly. Which is, which is absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Christina can't believe it. She's like, no way. You, you literally just ordered that ball, if we only knew, right? Um, but it doesn't matter because I still wanted to have a fingertip grip ball. But this is nice because this one actually weighs 14 pounds. So it's a pound lighter. And because it has the full finger grip, I can use this for a spare ball. Sometimes uh, professionals will have multiple uh, bowling balls for multiple situations. Uh, if a f uh, the lane is really, really oily, they may use a separate ball compared to when it's dry. Um, also, sometimes they'll use, you know, different balls to pick up their spares, you know. So in my case, if I don't want to put any kind of hook on my, my throw, I just want to roll it straight, I can still use this ball. All right, so it's not going to go to waste or anything. It's still going to be a bowling ball I'll use. So then <laughs> I'm looking, all right, let me put this down. I'm looking in the bag on the side pocket. Guess what's in there? A pair of shoes. I only have one here, but there was a pair, brand new, in my size. What are the chances of that? I got a brand new bag, a ball that's barely used, that happens to fit my fingers perfectly, and a pair of shoes that fit my feet perfectly for $5.99. So, needless to say, we were both extremely excited by the whole ordeal. And uh, so excited that we ended up going to a different, <laughs> a totally different uh, Salvation Army and a Goodwill just to see if our, our luck was still running. If we could find another bag with shoes for Christina, but no such luck. So Christina's, uh, you know, she ended up uh, ordering her own shoes, but that was pretty cool. So for six bucks, if I only held off, I would have had the ball. Now here's the thing though, because I would want that fingertip grip, they would have to fill in the holes, you know, and that's the charge and then re-drill it anyway. So, so what I, in the end of the day would have cost me probably 60 or 70 bucks uh, to make this ball work for me how I wanted it to. But I still think that was pretty crazy. So yeah, so now I have a duplicate of the same ball, but for two different purposes. So we're very much into bowling, so much so that I will tell you last night, we're sitting on the couch, both playing a bowling game that we downloaded for our cell phones while watching an old bowling tournament on TV. That's how into bowling we are right now. So uh, is it a passing phase? I don't know, you know, maybe two months from now, five months from now, next year, we're not into bowling as much, but who knows, you know? Right now, what I wanna do is I just wanna learn how to properly bowl, you know, to better my chances of having a better score when bowling. I've always been just okay with bowling. You guys know I'm like, I'm the master, or excuse me, I am the jack of all trades, master of none. If you've ever heard that uh, expression, it means I, I do a little of everything, but I'm not a master at anything. Bowling is just one of those things. I'm, I'm pretty okay doing it the wrong way. Now, of course, there's a lot of different styles in bowling, but there are some, some basics that you should be doing. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm just basically gonna work on my game. And so will Christina. And uh, eventually I'd like to do a, a bowling league. My biggest issue right now is time. I just, I have no spare time, no free time for anything. Uh, so, you know, making it to different games for, for league play, that's not even an option. 
Plus, I definitely don't roll on Shabbos <laughs> for all the big Lebowski fans. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. I've watched all the bowling movies about three times over. So I've literally seen Kingpin and the Big Lebowski both twice in the last week. That's how much into bowling we are right now. But yeah, I thought I'd uh, just take some time, enjoy the weather out here, and tell you all about my hour, because Christina and mine's uh, recent bowling obsession. So if you happen to go bowling or soon and you know you're local to us, you may see us out there trying to, to better our game. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are into bowling, let me know down below, you know, like seriously into bowling, uh, what kind of ball you throw and what you average. I would say right now I average a 130, which is okay for a bowling birthday party, but definitely not like, you know, league ready or anything like that. I have a couple bowling goals. My first, bowl, my first goal is to bowl a clean game, which means there's no open frames. So every, every frame is either a strike or a spare. I don't think I've ever done that. And I don't think I've ever broke 200. You know, at the bowling party, my, my family's, uh, bur uh, my niece's birthday party where all my family was at, I bowled, I think, a 185 or 187, something like that. So I got kind of close. But I don't recall specifically ever breaking 200. And uh, I thought that'd be pretty neat. You know, back in the day, my dad would average like a, I think he was averaging a 240, you know, which is very good. It's a very good bowler. And there's another story I'll tell you real quick. My dad almost got a perfect game once. This was back in the day when everyone was throwing uh, plastic balls too. That's a big difference in the sport. Um, today's day and age, it's a little bit more common for a lot more people to, to bowl a perfect game because of the reactive urethane, the type of technology that goes into these bowling balls that makes it a little bit easier uh, to hook and be more consistent and stuff. But if you watch like old bowling tournaments and stuff from the, the 80s or even the 70s, you'll see that, um, you know, even professionals, they're, they're missing splits and, and missing their spares and stuff like that. They're not always getting strikes. It was a lot harder to bowl with an older ball. But anyway, so my dad, he was uh, bowling. I don't know. I don't recall if this was like during league play or just randomly bowling. But he was, I think, on the ninth or 10th frame. He had all strikes the entire time, and people started to crowd around. You know, people in the bowling alley were seeing that he was bowling this perfect game. Everything was looking great, right? So a crowd started to gather. You know, 10th frame comes, rolls a strike. People are like, oh my God, this guy's gonna roll a perfect game. You know, throws another strike. Goes for that turkey, that perfect game, and there's all these people around, and he just blew it <laughs> at the last second. Uh, and then everyone just kind of went, oh, and just kind of, you know, dispersed again, which is hilarious because there's just so much pressure. I can't imagine that kind of pressure. Uh, but yeah, that would be, well, I mean, for any bowler, that's a, a lifetime goal, right? Is to bowl a perfect game. It's not as easy as you would think. You can, you can throw hundreds, if not thousands of strikes, but to get 12 strikes in a row is very difficult. <laughs> so anyway, that's my, uh, my story. Uh, on on bowling yeah if you got anything bowling related you want to say post in the comments I'll read it so thanks for watching I'm gonna get out here and probably gonna walk around the block take us for a walk because it is beautiful right now it's like 64 65 this is perfect this is what I would consider to be real spring and in northeastern Pennsylvania where I'm living we never get spring it's like super cold and then all of a sudden you know it's super hot and hot to me is like you know in the 80s 90s if I'm sweating, I'm hot. But right now it's perfect. There's just a really light breeze. The sun is, is shining very strong. I like it. So I'm gonna go enjoy my day. Hopefully you guys enjoy your day. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day <laughs> for the rest of the day. All right. <laughs> Take it easy.